his brothers and sisters because could you like just imagine his first like why can't you be more like jesus <laughs> i don't know mom <laughs> because i'm not the son of god <laughs> because someone's trying to kill me hey hey welcome back to road tripping with rachel i'm rachel and thanks for joining me on this road trip so if you have been following along, you know that this is being uploaded on a day I normally don't upload. <laughs> and that is because I was lucky enough to contract Influenza B <laughs> uh, right after Easter. So uh, as an apology from me, you are getting instead of one video, you're going to be getting two videos that are going to be uploaded this week. Uh, so this is going to go up on a Tuesday. It should be a Tuesday that you're watching it if you're keeping up. And then the um, video about John chapter 8 is actually going to go up on Thursday. So th both of those videos are going to be going up this week. So that way we can stay on track with where we are at as far as our Bible study goes. And my cat's over here on the side. <laughs> All right, so John chapter 7. So as we have been going through this, we keep looking at John and we see that John very deliberately allows the audience to see specific situations that Jesus finds himself in because they're wanting to show a very deliberate part of who Jesus is as he is revealed to be both the Son of God and the Son of Man. So as we are looking here at chapter 7, what we are really seeing now is some of the dynamic that is how Jesus interacts with people who've known him for a very long time, as well as how Jesus interacts with people who think they know him. Um, so as we open, we are seeing Jesus and his family. So these are his brothers. Um, now, if you've read any of the other gospels, you know, like there is absolutely no doubt like that Mary and Joseph knew exactly who Jesus was. You know, do I think it necessarily like really hit home that he was the Messiah until, you know, Mary sees him like dying on the cross and then gets to see her son raised from the dead in three days? Probably not. Like, I'm sure that probably didn't really sink in until that moment because, I mean, what parent wants to imagine their child dying? But I think that is probably kind of how it played out. And then, but... We still see like the interaction though between Jesus and some of his siblings. So um, I always thought that I would feel so bad for Jesus's siblings, his brothers and sisters, because could you like just imagine his parents like, why can't you be more like Jesus? <laughs> I think <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> but sarcasm aside. I do think it's important, though, that we take a look, though, at the fact that Jesus' siblings didn't really believe who he was. Um, the whole idea that a prophet doesn't even, doesn't receive any sort of glory in his hometown was very true for Jesus. So, you have, he's traveling through all these places. He's not avoiding the Pharisees, but he's not also intentionally putting himself in situations where he's going to have to deal with them unless he absolutely needs to. And then, he is working around like this area and then his brothers come up and are like like just go through judea like why are you like traipsing around just like cut straight through judea like it's not that big of a deal necessarily in judea which would have been like where like jerusalem bethlehem a lot of like our like major cities from the old testament would have been located at you knowing that like they're looking for an excuse to kill him at this point like it's not like it was hush hush like it was pretty obvious what was happening um they didn't believe that jesus was the messiah and they, it's very sarcastic of them to say like just go just cut through judea like why aren't you going through judea because someone's trying to kill me um, Jesus was always acting with the view that the cross was going to be the end game. How he, like, there was a time and a place that this was going to happen, and he was working towards that time and place. And now was not the time for him to do something that was going to incite this. And so, but instead, Jesus began really traveling much more like incognito. So, as you, as we've been reading, you've noticed that there are times where Jesus just kind of like disappears into the crowd, and like no one just knows where he's at. He just has the ability to do that. Um, I greatly admire that ability. He either has brings attention to himself or he's like, no, we're just not going to really worry about this. So he, he, but 
he begins moving really like more and more like incognito kind of when he needs to get to places it's not publicized how he's going or what routes he's taken but he has been taking the long way around to several places he's gone through samaria which as we read in chapter four is not something a jewish man that typically would have done but instead he chooses to do that so he is moving his way through um at his pace we're starting to say like here he is he's this great man or he's this deceiver which i for whether it's good or bad we tend to always go to the extremes of things so people are either doing like a really great job and what they're doing is of god or like they're just self-seeking and they're doing this because they just want to get whatever they want to get out of it. Um, now, whether that's true or not, that tends to be the two extremes that we always take, myself included, sometimes with people. Um, and sometimes, and I've even said this too, that sometimes the way something looks is just as important as whether or not it's true. Like um, in different jobs that I've had, perception matters. So even if you are doing something that is really good, if it is perceived as being done for selfish reasons, then it's viewed as being done for selfish reason, reasons, even if that is not at what is the heart of the issue that you're working with. And I think that is something that like as Christians, we do have to be more conscious of than what we're not. Um, people are always going to find bad things to say about you, whether you're doing something right um, or you're doing something wrong. If someone wants to find something negative to say, they're going to find something negative to say. Likewise, if someone wants to find something good to say about you, they're going to find something good to say about you. But your character kind of leads in whether or not um, your how you're perceived is going to be whether good or bad. And likewise, that says a lot for not just yourself, but also for your fellow brothers and sisters who are in Christ. That when, and I think this is probably the hardest thing about being in the church not just your local church body but like the larger church is that sometimes you you do have people who are very they're very much in the spotlight and then when they fall like they fall very hard and it's unfortunate but a lot of other people who are a part of that same group also get lumped in together with that um even if they didn't have anything to do with it um and had no part in any of the sins that were committed it's unfortunate but that is the way the world works um and jesus is in the midst of this now where people are looking for reasons to not believe in him likewise you had people who were who were saying like no he's doing all these great wonderful things they have to be of god but then you have people who don't want him to be of god so they are finding things to say that Make it look as though he's not, even though ultimately they just end up looking like fools. But that's what they're doing here. Um, and the people were afraid also in this because they're like, if I openly support Jesus and the Pharisees are coming for me. So as we're going through, he does go through incognito. He shows up in the temple. He snuck in more or less. And then he begins to teach. And all these people are like, oh my gosh, listen to him. Like, this is... Like, this man must be of God because they didn't recognize him. I don't know, like, what Photoshop Jesus used. I don't know what he did. I don't know, like, who created the mask, like, in Mrs. Doubtfire. But, I mean, Jesus was able to go where he needed to go without any issues. And he begins preaching and teaching about the Sabbath and the law. And the people are just in awe. And that includes our Pharisees and our Sadducees. And so it's not until they realize that it's Jesus that they begin to get upset, like, they were associating like this issue just with Jesus. They weren't thinking about like if someone totally different came and was saying the exact same thing, they were like, this is great. This is wonderful. I can't believe how learned this man is. And people, more and more people are starting to see that this is the Messiah at this point. They know who it is. Um, but this was also resulting in some discrimination. Like I said, um, it was, it was becoming more prominent for people to say that he was the Messiah. And as a result, you had more and more people who were starting to be ostracized by their local communities because they were recognizing who Jesus was. And it was cutting them off from a lot of their, the social part that was tied so much to the local synagogue. And so, and then they end up getting upset with him because He's this Jewish man who's a rabbi who's teaching about the things of God. And they're like, well, I know we don't like him and we want to make sure that he 
is not a demon and not of the devil but he needs to make sure that he's only teaching us like don't go and teach this to any of the gentile folks because they're not jews you can see that this was a problem it's like they considered Jesus a problem, but he was our problem. He was their problem. He, and as long as he was their problem, like they didn't want to have to share him with anyone else. Like they still want to claim on him. And people are becoming divided over who he is. Like this is something it's becoming more and more and more prominent. And it becomes, as we go throughout scripture in the book of John, we're going to see this more and more. The idea of like, is Jesus a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he the Messiah? Is he of the devil? Like this is a, an ongoing question that people are going to have like right up until the end. And even the Pharisees begin to get really involved in this question. So you have this basically this social body um, that whose sole purpose is to make sure that people are following the the law to the letter all the i's are dotted and t's are crossed so to speak and they are beginning now who because of their own study of scripture are starting to see that you know he might be like he might actually be the messiah like it could actually be him and then you have this other group saying no 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 he can't be because remember we also have nicodemus we have joseph of arimathea we'll eventually have paul these very learned individuals are starting to question what it is that they are doing and saying to the people and they're start some of them are starting to say like no i think this might actually be the messiah and then you have the other one saying no 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 and within like within the realm of the pharisees like we can understand at least a little bit of this because they know that there's no prophets who are coming out of galilee like none of them show up <laughs> there are none um, we begin to get Nicodemus who's becoming more vocal and he's like we can't judge him unless we hear from him like he's saying like you have to listen you we have to obey our own laws so we have this going on now the Pharisees begin to say like no these people they're cursed they're terrible people we shouldn't be listening to them which one like come on people like there really is nothing new under the sun that's basically what this part gets to chapter seven is where we start to see things heating up so thanks for watching we're gonna get deeper into this whenever we go into john chapter eight if you enjoyed this make sure you like and subscribe that helps out my channel and it gets the content out to more and more people and make sure you hit that bell that way you'll be able to know whenever my notifications come up so i will see you here later this week bye